And we are very pleased to be joined now on BTN Live by Matt Millen, of course, Fox and BTN analyst. He was calling the game between Iowa and Illinois State last week. And Matt, I want to start there. You know, it's funny, we were talking about it throughout the course of the day when Howard and Jerry and I signed off on the pregame show and tossed it out to you and Kevin for this game. We kind of gave the, hey, I know this is an FCS team, but this is a really good FCS team and this should be a very competitive game. And it flat out wasn't. I mean, Iowa really dominated the game. Were you surprised by how well they played? Uh, there, were, there were so many question marks that I don't know if I was surprised or if I was pleased or if I was, I don't know what I was. Because, uh, first of all, you know, nobody really, I hadn't seen better, really, except for in practice, that was it. And then they're starting three sophomores, so that's always a question mark. And not only because of their ability, but, you know, how they handle the game day. That's, that's a big deal. You're in front of all those people, and it's the first time out, and you don't know how they go. And then you're replacing guys on the defensive side, and, the same reasons apply there. And, you know, i got to tell you, Dave, um, Kirk Ferentz had to be very pleased because Bethard is a real-life quarterback. And he's going, to be, uh, he's going to be the author of a lot of wins out there for Iowa. The offensive line responded very well. And it's something very good to build on. And defensively, um, the, the guys they have, young players, some sophomores, a lot of juniors, uh, but Drew Watts, the, the right defensive end, he kind of led the way, and they, they took over that game. So, in short, it's a game that a good Big Ten team should really it should dominate, and they did. They dominated them, and that's, that's a good football team. That Illinois State has some players, but it was dominated by Iowa. Have you ever seen anything, Matt, like the fake field goal that was unsuccessful, and then the crowd gives a standing ovation? <laughs> Yeah, normally that's reserved. That's usually reserved for a team that's been, you know, 0-27 and, and they tried something new. But I think what they were doing was saying, hey, this is something different. It's not the same old, same old. Kirk, Kirk's actually trying some things, which I got a kick out of because I know Kirk so well. But I think, Dave, what it really was was saying, look, I think, I think we're better than people think we are, and I can trust my defense here, so even if we don't get it, uh, I'm still going to rely on them, and they're going to handle it. And that's exactly what happened. I want to move on to your game that you have Saturday, Ohio State and Hawaii here on BTN. But before we do that, I have to ask you about one more game from this past Saturday, and that is your alma mater, Penn State. What needs to happen here, Matt, for James Franklin to kind of keep this thing from going off the rails, obviously in particular with the offensive line? Well, obviously, a lot of work needs to go into it, but more than the work, there's some realism that has to show up. So I didn't get to watch the tape in its full entirety. So what I really saw were bits and pieces and some highlights. And from those highlights, this is what I saw. I saw a left tackle that let the game get to him, and I don't know if he was in over his head, but it was his first start, and they didn't help him. They didn't chip over there. They didn't put a tight end over there. And what I could tell from the highlights, he was responsible for five of the ten sacks. And it looked like the backs were responsible for two. It looked like the quarterback was responsible for two. And then the fifth, the, the last one, I couldn't tell who it was inside. It was a combination, so it's either one of the guards or the center. So the bottom line is this. If you can't protect, you can't throw. You can't throw your one dimension, you're going to get mauled. The defensive coordinator for Temple is a good friend of mine, Phil Snow. And all Phil did was numbers. And by that, Dave, I mean, if you have a six-man protect, we're bringing a seventh. You have a five-man protect, we're bringing six. That's all he did. It was, it's, it's basic football. It's just a numbers game. And uh, so that's, that's alarming. And so I think uh, Coach Franklin understands that. Coach Franklin knows what he has to do. They're just going to have to protect Hackenberg because uh, Hack is an extremely talented – I have guys calling me all the time from the pros – ask me about hack, and they want to know if, if I'm seeing what they're seeing. And the truth is, yes, you are seeing it, but if you, can, if you can't keep them upright, that's going to be tough to handle. Now, it's amazing when you see him in person, and obviously we go to preseason practice. I mean, he throws the deep ball as beautifully as anyone I've ever seen in doing these camp tours and as effortlessly. So there is a ton of talent there, but, man, it's a difficult situation right now. I mean, you're, you sack ten times, you 
throw 11 completions in a game. It's not really a, a recipe for success. Uh, let's move on to Ohio State and Hawaii. I want to get your take on the Buckeyes. They were obviously fabulously impressive in the opener. Were you surprised by the quarterback choice at all? Oh uh, yeah, actually I was. I I had expected that JT Barrett would be the starter, and um, you know a year ago I, I worked for a four letter network, and um, when when uh, when Barrett came in, everybody was panicking, and guys were saying it's over, they're going to lose all these games, and and I was fortunate to have watched a um, some of their preseason, some of the practice, and what you saw out of JT Barrett. And I'm not saying he's this guy, but he had this quality. He had a Montana-esque quality. He had a good understanding. He was smooth in his delivery, didn't have the big arm, very accurate, could get out of trouble with his feet. He bought time. He ran when he had. So he saw all those things. And so um, I had not really seen Cardale Jones except for that also in that practice. That's it. You could see he had a big arm. Like, I didn't really see a lot. And, uh, and then, of course, you know, he went on and wins a national championship, and he has a big arm, and that adds another dimension to that offense. But I, I still believed that J.T. Barrett would get the call. And But, you know, you're not there every day, and Urban is, and Urban knows a little bit more about those guys than I do, that's for sure. To me, I think this game that you're going to call Saturday is really interesting, Matt, simply because we're going to learn just how motivated this team is. It's easy to motivate against Virginia Tech. In that great environment at Lane Stadium, a team that beat you a year ago, it might be a little more challenging to motivate against Hawaii when everyone's talking about how now you're going to waltz through your schedule. How does Urban Meyer guard against complacency, not just Saturday, but going forward the rest of the way here? Well, actually, Urban's got himself a, a nice little recipe going. And the way you get yourself through that is it's, it's not only your frontline guys who are getting ready to play, but this is an opportunity in this game for your for your your juniors who are not playing and your sophomores who are upcoming and the freshmen who he hasn't registered to say, look, here's an opportunity uh, because we're going to play in this game. Look, Dave, let's be straight. This game this game will be over in the middle of the second quarter, and so it's going to be others, and those others need to play and need to play well and need to show what they have, and that's what I'm actually I'm looking forward to that. I'm actually I'm looking forward to see because he's he stocked the cupboard pretty well here with his recruiting, and I want to see where the you know there's another Cardell Jones in that team that we're not watching and everybody's going to say whoa where the heck did that kid come from? You keep forgetting they recruited these guys and then somebody gets to start and somebody doesn't, but it doesn't mean they're not a talented kid. So that's the part I'm looking forward to. BTN's Matt Millen. Matt, we are looking forward to the game on Saturday afternoon as well, again, right here on BTN. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Anytime, David. Talk to you.